Lee and Lee have just released their new line of O11 cases. And after taking a look at the Evo XL case, I could quite confidently say that this could well be one of the most popular cases of 2023. We've built in all previous versions of the O11 multiple times. So we have a lot of experience with it. And I can tell you there are loads of upgraded features and tons of water cooling support. So let's take a look at it. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the original O11 Evo against the O11 Evo XL. The design layer is fairly similar but with the size difference the Evo XL has a lot more features and customization. To give you an idea the Evo XL is 55 millimeters longer, 19 millimeters wider and 70 millimeters taller. Now this extra size allows for a lot more customization and water cooling support. So let's dive in further. The O11 Evo XL still follows its clean design from its predecessor. The case is primarily made of tempered glass and brushed aluminium panels on the outside and powder coated aluminium on the inside. The front I.O. includes USB-C, USB 3.0, and a microphone combo jack. Now this is located at the front just under the tempered glass panel, but Lee and Lee gives users the ability to move this all the way to the front panel, just in case this is an easier location for you to reach in your particular setup. Our third I.O. location is actually moving it to the rear of the case. This actually becomes super handy if you want to hide every single cable at the back, but at the same time makes it a little more difficult to reach some easy to reach USB ports. Now the rest of the I.O is actually located at the top back side of the case. Here we have the power button and the reset button. Now these two buttons right here are actually for controlling the RGB. As you guys know, with most of Leon Lee's cases, they have some integrated RGB, which can be manually controlled using these two inbuilt buttons, or you can connect it to the motherboard using the built-in three-pin header. Now the only dust filter built into this case is actually down the bottom here. It is now a pull-out panel rather than a mesh that is magnetized to the bottom of the case. Every other panel is either completely open grill style or has much smaller hole cutouts which personally I think looks more aesthetically pleasing. The extra filters actually come with the case so you can add them if you like. Now to access the case for the first time you are going to have to remove this top panel. Now the top glass panel is actually screwed in so we're going to have to remove this screw. Now for me personally I'll actually be keeping that screw off the case for ease of access whenever I need it. And same goes with the front glass panel. Simply one screw and then you can pull out the glass. Now the back panel is not actually screwed in, but they've created these little notches to get your finger in so that you can pull the back panel out. Both the front panel, the side panel, and the rear panel are all held in by small ball nodules that enter the clamps and get stuck in place. And both the front and side glass panel can also be screwed in place as well. For me personally, I don't feel like the screw is necessary. There is enough clamping force in the plastic clip to keep the glass safely in place. However, if you are moving your case around, then that's when I would be careful. The clamp is actually made of plastic and is quite flexible, which actually gives it that strong hold. On previous versions of this case, this top panel right here has always been removable and you could replace it with a top IO kit. Now I did ask Leon Lee about any plans for this and nothing will be coming out during launch of this case, but it certainly doesn't rule out future possibilities. Moving on to the interior in the rear section, this panel right here acts to hide all the cables. Not only that, but it doubles up as an SSD mounting tray. So you could fit three regular 2.5 inch SSDs on this panel. Now these hard drive cages are also on hinges and they are completely removable as well. If you want access to install your hard drives or your extra SSDs, you simply release this, push it to open, then you can pull the tray out. Now, apart from the two spaces down the bottom, you've also got the two up top for a total of four three and a half inch drives or another four SSDs. Now, the power and data cables are already built into the cage, so it's pretty much plug and play. The hard drive cages also have spacing to mount a 15 millimeter thick fan. Power supply wise, I can quite comfortably fit this normal size power supply in. There is about a 20 mil gap between the power supply and the cable bracket. If you have a power supply larger than 190 millimeters, then you will need to remove the cable bracket and put it elsewhere. This Corsair HX 1200 power supply is obviously too big for this, so this would be one of those instances where we need to remove the cable bracket and put it elsewhere. Now, this is where Leon Lee has been very smart about this case. We have so many options to move this cable bracket up or down depending on where we want it, so we can now use larger power supplies in this case. Moving to the interior of the case, it can fit up to an EATX size motherboard. And you can do this the normal way by installing it inside the case, or you can completely remove the tray, removing these thumb screws and a few thumb screws on the back. And then we can simply take it out. Now to keep things uniform in the case today, I'm actually gonna go with 120 millimeter compatible radiators. I've also chosen to go with the Thermaltake radios because they're approximately 12 mil thicker than the EK variants. If these Thermaltake radios can fit, then EK will definitely be able to fit. 
Starting off with the standard case layout, we're gonna be looking at the rear of the case. Fan compatibility in this mode is actually a single 120 millimeter fan. You cannot fit two fans in in this particular layout. You also can't fit a 140 millimeter fan in there, which is why I've decided to go with 360 millimeter radiators in other spots. I think it'd be a bit uncohesive having some 140 millimeter fans here and there and some 120s everywhere else. Radiator compatibility, however, we can fit a single 120 millimeter radiator in this spot if we want. Thickness is not an issue. The only thing that will reduce thickness is tubes coming out of the CPU block. And realistically, there are no radiators that thick on the market. Now I did say initially I'd be using thermal take radiators. However, the thermal take radiator is actually too wide for this position. You can only fit a maximum of 131 millimeters from end to end. The thermal take radiator is 132 millimeters. So we miss out by one millimeter. Now, one way to avoid the thickness issue would be to flip the whole radiator around so that the fan is on the inside, which pushes it past the case here so it doesn't matter if there's a little bit of overhang. By doing it this way, the maximum radiator width that you can get is 134 mil. Now, the top radiator bracket is completely removable so you can install your radiator outside the case. It is compatible with a 420 millimeter radiator and a 360 millimeter radiator. Again, in our case, because we can only fit a 120 millimeter fan on the back, we're gonna keep it cohesive and go with the 360 millimeter radiator up the top. As you can see here, there is plenty of room for thicker 360 millimeter radiators. This particular one is 64 millimeters in thickness. Now with the fans applied, we actually have an extra 22 millimeters of room before we hit the RAM. Now it doesn't matter if you have a high profile or low profile RAM, the radiator is completely on the path. So once it hits the RAM, that is the thickness compatibility limitations. Now from the radiator bracket itself to the top of the RAM, there is about 112 millimeters clearance. So it can pretty much accommodate any radiator on the market. Now there are a couple of issues I've run into with the top radiator compatibility. I'm currently two millimeters away from hitting the VRM heatsink on the motherboard. If I was to use a 420 millimeter radiator from Thermaltake, it would not be compatible. Not at this thickness anyway. I could definitely fit a 420 millimeter radiator in there, plus the fans, as long as they don't exceed 80 millimeters. Anything over than that, and we're going to be running into the VRM heatsink. A current total thickness that we have is around 90 millimeters. Now, of course, the size of VRM heat sinks vary from motherboard to motherboard. This radiator may actually have compatibility issues depending on how high the VRM heat sink sits. But something like an EK360 is much thinner than this radiator, so it shouldn't be an issue. The bottom radiator bracket is actually compatible with a 420 or a 360 millimeter radiator. However, thicker 360 millimeter radiators are not Leon Lee's best friend. As you can see, the screw holes do not line up in the screw guides. So this thicker thermal take radiator radiator is not actually compatible. Something like a standard EK radiator will fit, however, because it's not as thick as a thermal take radiator. So I think they should somehow implement a change here where wider radiators can still be compatible. Now, there are three fixes that I can think of. And the first one is by installing some motherboard standoffs. This allows the standoffs to give a bit of height so that we're not being affected by the lip of this bracket. And as you can see here, we are now able to install our screws. The second fix would be to install the bracket this way around. Now, now you still have these screw holes here, so you could still screw it down and it will not move in the case. And our third option would be to install the bracket on the fans instead of the radiator because the fans are much thinner than the width of the radiator. So midway through filming, we actually picked up on a radiator issue compatibility with the bottom slot on the case. You were unable to fit thicker 360 millimeter radiators or 420 millimeter radiators on the bracket. Now it looks like Lee and Lee have listened to not only us, but other reviewers and actually developed a second bracket which allows the radiator to fit comfortably. Down the bottom there, you can see that they've installed a second row for the screws to be mounted into. Now this shifts the radiator approximately one centimeter towards the motherboard, but it gives us so much more flexibility when it comes to radiator compatibility. Now this is important information because first batches of cases will still have the old bracket inside. You'll have to go to Leon Lee's website and apply for one of the new brackets. All future cases past those initial batches will receive the new bracket. Now this change does not affect any of the initial testing that we did. To take things a step further, reviewers have actually noticed that it was hard 
to install the GPU and they were having issues of getting it in properly. So Leon Lee actually postponed the launch date just to fix up all of the motherboard trays in all of their cases. So they're really trying to make sure that users have a great experience with their products and that's what I love about Leon Lee. All cases will come with the new motherboard tray. One thing I will say is that by changing the radiator bracket, it slightly puts the top radiator out of line of the bottom radiator. So if you do plan on having a tube coming from the top to the bottom, you may need to use something like an offset fitting or have a small kink in the tube. Of course, this can all be avoided by using one of the methods that I did mention earlier on with the original bracket. Now, radiator thickness compatibility is not really too much of an issue when it comes to this case and the bottom bracket. As you can see here, there is enough room here if we wanted to do a push-pull configuration or even fit in a thicker radiator. Now, this particular graphics card is the Tough Gaming and obviously different graphics cards are thicker than others. And so it's up to you to do your research there. From the radiator bracket all the way up to the graphics card, we have about 130 millimeters of play. Now, my only concern with this particular setup is that you are bringing in the fresh air through the radiator, which then heats it up and then it's going straight into the GPU. But let's be real for a second. If you're going to go with a case like this with all of this custom water cooling, the likelihood of you keeping your GPU under air is minimal and you're going to be installing a GPU water block. Now, as you can see here, by installing a water block on our card, not only does the hot air become less relevant in this situation, but we now have a new clearance distance of around 170 millimeters. So it can accommodate pretty much every single radiator in push-pull configuration on the market. So let's talk about radiator compatibility for this back section here. Again, you can fit a 420 millimeter radiator or a 360 millimeter radiator in this back section. In this current configuration, from the back of the GPU to the radiator bracket, you have 91 millimeters worth of clearance. Again, our current setup is actually 89 millimeters. So this 360 millimeter radiator and these fans will fit at the back here. Now, as you can see here, guys, this setup configuration is pretty much where our limit ends. As I said before, 89 millimeters is the thickness of the radiator in these fans, and we had 91 millimeters to play with, so you can't go any thicker than this. Leon Lee also provides these seal plates to plug up any extra spaces that you don't want visible. This helps a little bit with airflow. Another thing you need to keep in mind, guys, is that in this current configuration and your current water cooling experience, do you think that 36 millimeters is enough room for you to get both tubes out of this tight space and to the next port. Something to consider when running with this thickness of radiator. And of course, if you run a 420, well, there's gonna be even less room to play with. Now, Leon Lee's actually come up with a few ways to maximize the compatibility of this back section. We are pretty much at our limits on the inside. However, there is enough room for us to remove the fans and put them on the back side, which will give us that extra spacing to add an even thicker radiator if we want to. Now, this radiator is already 64 millimeters thick, so we'd be able to add of around another 28 millimeters on top of that. At the back section here, there is around 40 millimeters of clearance. Now, Lee and Lee have actually came up with another solution because I like to show my fans at the front. I think they look good, at least better than the surface of a radiator. We can actually remove this whole panel and flip it the other way around. Now, all of this 40 millimeters of real estate that we have at the back here is going to be available for us inside the case. So now with the bracket flipped, we have so much more room to play with. I can now run a push-pull configuration still, or I can get another 35 millimeters radiator thickness before I'm even touching the GPU. Now keep in mind, I'm using the GPU as a reference because that would roughly line up with where a 420 millimeter radiator would sit. Obviously, if the GPU is under a water block, it wouldn't even probably come past the length of the motherboard. So the graphics card is not even a variable at that point. And you'll notice that just by doing this, we've given ourselves so much more room to work with the tubes and the ports. Alternatively, you can flip the radiator the other way so that the ports are down the bottom and you'll have the exact same amount of room to work with. Now, in terms of GPU support, it's quite obvious that length is not gonna be an issue inside this case. Height is also not really gonna be an issue until you start water blocking your graphics cards. Now, the particular problem area is actually where the terminal is gonna be. For example, this particular graphics card that we are using right here with the water block on it has about one more millimeter of clearance before it will hit the glass. So effectively, this is the max height that we can put in. Now from the PCIe lane to the end of the graphics card, we have 164 mil before we're gonna hit the glass. 
The case does come with a GPU support anti-sag bracket. Keep in mind the anti-sag bracket needs to be installed before the motherboard. However, if you want to vertically mount your GPU or have an upright GPU, you'd have to purchase those brackets separately from Leon Lee. In terms of pump reservoir support, this case has endless features to allow you to put almost whatever you want in. Now with this current setup that we are doing, a 240 millimeter D5 FLT240 fits in this space really nice. Now, as you can see here, the FLT240 T240 takes up 90 mil worth of space. We still have another 112 mil before we would hit the glass panel. So there's loads of play inside this case. Alternatively, we also have the ability to mount a pump res combo to the bottom radiator or to the back fans. With this current setup, there is 296 mil between the fan and the top of the radiator. Now keep in mind, you still need to leave some room for your fittings above the ports. Up the top and down the bottom of this case at the front here, I can see extra screw holes, which Leon Lee have implemented. Now nothing in the manual actually states what they are for and they're not currently being used. You'll also notice that there are slight indents in a lot of these as well. Now for all of the previous 011 cases brought to market, there were always distro plates made for the front panel. So all of these extra screw holes can act to secure a distro in place. Now this distro could have a built-in pump as well. Luckily for us, we are able to shift our 360 millimeter radiator another 50 mil the other way, and we'll have plenty of room if there is a pump that sticks out. I was also thinking another radiator bracket as well. However, this would be right up against the glass, so I'm not exactly sure what will happen here. Maybe a radiator bracket up against an upgrade mesh panel that they might sell separately. We'll have to wait and see. The glass Glass is now also cut at a 45 degree angle for a flush, seamless look. So if Leon Lee were to partner with EK Waterblocks or any other company to create a front distro, they would have to taper that edge at a 45 degree angle to make sure it is flush. Now here is where this case gets extremely unique. There are loads of different layout options and the first couple we're gonna cover is the position of the motherboard. We can actually move the whole tray up or down. So let's take a look. Remember before how I showed you guys how to remove the motherboard tray? Well, we can do exactly that and we can actually move it up one whole slot to make more room on the bottom and a little less room on the top. Both brackets are now reinstalled down the bottom. So how does this affect radiator compatibility? Well, starting off with the side panel, this does not change anything at all. You still have the same constraints depending on the particular thickness of radiator you use up the top and bottom, or if you use a longer GPU. At the back, we can still fit our 120 millimeter radiator. However, this does come with some constraints. In this particular configuration, the radiator is sitting 40 mil below the top radiator bracket. This means that it makes it impossible to install a 420 millimeter radiator on the top bracket because it's going to stick out too much and clash with the 120. There is also another compatibility issue we're facing here. Our clearance here from the RAM is now only 78 millimeters, so we cannot even fit our thick 64 millimeter thermal take radiators with the fans. But something like this P360 or P420 radiator from EK Waterblocks will fit. However, if you were to put a 420 millimeter radiator in this position, it is 465 millimeters long. This would mean that you need to remove the 120 millimeter radiator radiator at the rear. Something like this 360 millimeter radiator can work just fine with the 120 millimeter radiator installed. Now this particular P360 radiator is around 45 millimeters in thickness. This is about the extent we can go in terms of thickness because we are just seven millimeters clear of the RAM. The only other thing I will mention here is that by using the P360 or a P420 from EK Waterblocks up the top here, the fans do need to be on the underside of the radiator and not on top because the radiator is too thick and will collide with the VRM heatsink. It's also going to be a very tight squeeze to fit in your CPU power cables into the motherboard, even with this configuration. So make sure you plug them in first. Down the bottom, restrictions do not change. We can still fit our 420 or 360 millimeter radiator. However, we now have more room to play with. We have about 205 millimeters of play from the radiator bracket until we are hitting the GPU. In fact, if you really wanted to, we now have enough room to install our FLT 
C pump res combo in this layout because there is so much room. If you are not planning on water cooling the GPU, then you have about 160 mil worth of play. In this particular setup, that leaves about 70 mil between the radiator and the bottom of the GPU. That also means that the FLT pump res combo in this configuration is no longer an option. Moving our motherboard to the bottom layout changes things quite a lot in terms of cooling. Now this back section still has the exact same specifications as mentioned before. At the rear here, we now have the ability to have two 120 millimeter fans. We also still have the ability to utilize a 120 millimeter radiator in this section. I did try and fit a 240 millimeter radiator. However, if the case was just five millimeters higher, I would have been able to make this work. Now the top of the case has been opened up back to a 420 millimeter radiator or a 360 millimeter radiator from Thermaltake. We also have another 30 mil until we reach the motherboard VRM heatsink or another 59 mil before we reach the top of our Dominate Platinum RAM. Down the bottom, we can still fit our 360 or our 420 millimeter radiator. Again, width is still not an issue here. However, you'll wanna make sure you install your motherboard cables first before you put the radiator in. We still have the ability to run a push-pull configuration if water cooling our GPU, as there is about 40 millimeters worth of clearance from the top of the radiator to the GPU. From the radiator bracket to the bottom of the GPU, there's about 132 mil of play. Now, if you wanted to keep an air-cooled GPU, then unfortunately, you'd have to remove just a slither of that radiator thickness to make it work. This is just not able to work by about one millimeter. At this point, reservoir compatibility does not change at all because you still have the same distance between the top and the bottom radiator. Now, a third and final layout is the reverse mode. By pushing down the little tab at the back, we're able to remove the feet and put them onto the top of the case. Effectively, this completely reverses the layout of the motherboard. Now, this gives us quite an interesting look for this build. Spec-wise, nothing changes in terms of compatibility. It is the exact same build, just flipped up Side down. The radiator is the same distance from the RAM. This radiator is the same distance from the GPU. Nothing changes. The motherboard in this mode can still go in at a higher level or it could be lowered as well. Again, specs are exactly the same as the standard motherboard layout mode. Now, one major difference I did want to mention in terms of compatibility with having the reverse layout enabled is the fact that if you do decide to keep your GPU air cool, which I know majority of people won't do, but I think it's worth mentioning, you actually now have way more space to install your reservoir on top of the bottom radiator. Now, previously, when the GPU was sitting down here, you could see it actually cuts off and that's what it did over here, but the GPU was obviously in line with the reservoir. So this type of setup was actually not possible. So that's one thing to keep in mind. The other thing that I've noticed is the GPU tries to pull in cool air. Usually up the top, you would actually have heat exhaust out of the case because heat rises. Now, obviously you can change your fans around and fans pushing air will always be stronger than heat rising. So theoretically, you can actually have intake up the top if you do want that. So there you have it, guys. That is the Leon Lee 011 Dynamic Evo XL case. I really went all out to try and make sure that I could cover every single feature possible that I could think of. And we put so much effort into this video. And guys, if you did appreciate it, please let us know down in the comments. In terms of price, this case is coming out for $235 US dollars. The white version will actually be $10 extra at $245 US dollars. Now this is actually $80 to $90 more expensive than the original Leon Lee 011 Evo. But considering all of the customization, the extra compatibility and improved layout designs of this case, I personally think it's worth it. And I'm actually super excited about this case and to see what people do with it because with all of the different layouts, I am hoping to see some really unique custom hardline loops. Whereas in the past, all of the previous L11s, they've all been the exact same layout and personally, it gets old and there's almost nothing special about it at that point because everyone's doing it. So because of that, we're actually going to be doing a full build in this case and a video will be coming to you very soon because we're super excited about this case let me know what you think about this case in the comments if i missed anything let me know as well and i'll do my best to reply to your comment thanks for watching and we'll see you all in the next one